pressure and basically um, how it works is you've got this foot pedal that um, ejects aluminum oxide which is a very abrasive material and when it comes into contact with the specimen which is enclosed in this unit is so abrasive that it's able to work away the sand surrounding the specimen but without damaging the actual fossil. This one here, which you actually have to be really careful with because um, he's a lot more powerful. Again, it won't hurt you, but um, it has the ability to fracture the specimen if we're not careful. So that one's um, when you really need to dig around, like for example, the calyx, the head of the crinoid. All right, so let's, let's give it a go. delicate part of the specimen like that. But we're just gonna try to tackle this side. And the bubble wrap is just to support the underside of the specimen. Now when we turn the tool on, you don't wanna turn it on to um, a delicate part of the specimen. So you wanna either hold it over like some sediment like that because the first blow is going to be the most powerful and Tom's just drawn on some outlines of what he thinks the fossil is going to look like as a, as a rough guideline just using a permanent marker. Okay so let's just try to work out this guy a little bit here, this crinoid. So when you're over the fossil you don't want to hold, hold it down in one spot like it's okay when you're over the sediment to hold it in one spot to expose what's underneath but when you're over a delicate specimen like this you actually want to work it back and forth slowly so that you don't damage the fossil this is my first time doing it by the way i'm pretty proud of myself just carefully work around it see when i'm up on the actual fossil kind of like back off a bit and keep moving back and forth. Don't want to damage the specimen. And when you start to see some pink, then um, you know you're uncovering the fossil. So you just got to back off a bit. Looks like we have a stem right here, a bit of the crinoid stem. Different angle here. Oh, my hand is getting the crap. <laughs> it's hard work. I'm trying to get a lot more 
pink there. And um, this is an incomplete crinoid here, another incomplete one. But this one will be really interesting because um, it looks like we might have the full body of the crinoid. So yeah, that's how it's done. Not bad for my first go, I think. Had a lot of fun. Let's check out what else is in here. specimens here. The one that I was working on um, was embedded in sandstone, so it's actually a really easy example that I had because it's really easy to work away the sandstone surrounding the crinoid, but sometimes the crinoid is finding a lot harder material, um, in which case they'll use different tools to remove the specimen. So that's for another day because it's more advanced. It's a beautiful calyx of a crinoid and it looks like he's um, obviously letting his fossil preparer know what he wants done um, with the markings he's put on here. This one's had a little bit of reconstruction done to it. So the crinoid was missing these pieces here which we can add on to make the specimen complete. some of that excess sediment and we can get right into the crinoid. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this session on fossil preparation. Let's just say goodbye to Marty and I'm gonna get back to doing some more fossil prep. Bye Marty. Keep up the good work. Bye. See ya.